Hi, and thanks for joining us for this course focused on authentication and data connectivity topics with SAP Analytics Cloud. My name is Sujit Judge, and I'm a product manager for SAP Analytics Cloud. Now, I hope you also joined us for the course Intelligent Decisions with SAP Analytics Cloud, which targeted the business user. In this course, we're targeting the IT administrators and have some exciting content coming over the next couple of weeks. At least it's the stuff that I find exciting. Much of what we covered in week one will focus on how to set up custom SAML authentication with SAP Analytics Cloud and how to set up live connections with SAML single sign-on to SAP HANA. In week two, we continue exploring the power process to set up live connections with uh, SAML SSO to on-premise applications like SAP NetWeaver Systems, and that would include SAP BW and S4 HANA. We'll also see how business objects universes can be consumed by setting up live connections to SAP Business Objects BI platform. For many of the SAML SSO demos, I'll use SAP NetViewer IDP, but we'll also get to see SAP Cloud Platform Identity Authentication Service, which is SAP's cloud-based IDP. In week three, we continue to talk about live connections, but focus more on SAP's cloud-based applications, like S4 HANA Cloud and HANA running in SAP Cloud Platform, We'll also discuss additional deployment scenarios before switching gears to talk, talk about data import connectivity. And I'll wrap up the week and the course with some tips and tricks on troubleshooting connectivity and authentication issues. So let's look at the difference, uh, differences between live and import data connections. So the option that you decide to use will really depend upon your use case and what data sources you're, uh, you're planning to use with SAP Analytics Cloud in your deployment. One of the key benefits of live connections is that data is not replicated into SAP Analytics Cloud. So there's no need to transfer data from an on-premise system to SAP Analytics Cloud. So for customers that have very stringent data security requirements, live connections is the way to go as confidential data doesn't leave their customer's network. With live connections, you're also able to leverage the existing investments you have in complex data models in your on-premise or cloud sources. And those models could be HANA calculation views, BW queries, CDS views in the case for us for HANA, or business objects universes. Investments in data level securities are also preserved as with live connections, we respect the data level authorization setup that's already been done in the source system. Now, because the connection is live, the stories that are built in SAP Analytics Cloud using that live connection will also show the latest data upon opening, upon opening or refresh. And end-to-end -end, end -end SSO for live connections is possible with SAML. Much of what we're gonna do in week one, we'll show you how to set up this for various SAP applications uh, we will talk about how to set up SAML as well as, uh, as well as live connection. Import data connections on the other hand is where the data is replicated from the source system to SAP Analytics Cloud. So certain features of SAP Analytics Cloud are only available if the data is imported into the system. So for example, Smart Predict or the full planning capabilities as well as Smart Assist features for the moment are only available if the data is imported into the system. Now we're aggressively working towards offering some of these capabilities for live connections as well. So make sure you check the what's new blogs on the SAP Analytics Cloud side for the latest updates in this area. With data import, I, I have the flexibility to, to wrangle and cleanse the data in SAP Analytics Cloud, which I don't get with live connections. And as opposed to live connections where the stories show the latest information from the source system, with imported data connection, the refresh of that data can be scheduled on regular intervals. And there's a scheduling mechanism built in SAP Analytics log for that purpose. So looking at the different data sources that are supported for live and import connections, for both live and input scenarios, we support both cloud and on-premise data sources. For live connections out of the box, we support SAP HANA running in the cloud platform, S4 HANA in the cloud, and SAP Marketing Cloud. And for on-premise systems, we support SAP HANA, SAP BW, and that BW could be BW for HANA, BW on HANA, or BW on any other data source, plus S for HANA, BPC, and SAP Business Object Universes.
Now that's what you get out of the box for the moment, but there are partner-based connectivity solutions that are available that really expand the, the options that are available for live connection. In addition, there are options to use HANA's smart data access or the business objects universes as a way to connect to hundreds of other data sources uh, that are supported uh, for live connections. For data import, you can see there are several cloud-based data sources, both SAP and non-SAP you can connect to. And connectors to various on-premise SAP applications are also available. And for third-party sources, the options are quite robust as well. So I don't list them all here, but the option that you see on the screen here, the same data source as SAP BI 4.2, means that we can connect to any data source that's also supported by SAP BI 4.2 platform. So if you're familiar with the BI platform, you'll know that the list of supported databases is quite comprehensive. And you can also find the full list of supported data sources under the system requirements and technical prerequisite information that's available in SAP Analytics Cloud Help page. So one thing to note here is that you don't need to have the BI platform to use this import data connectivity from, uh, from third party sources. We connect to those sources using, uh, to connect to those SQL databases using the JDBC drivers. Now let's look at live connections in a bit more detail and see how they work in SAP Analytics Cloud. So as I mentioned before with live connections, the data is not imported into the cloud. So when a story is built on top of a live source, only the metadata information is stored in SAP Analytics Cloud. So when a user launches their browser window and accesses an analytical story, the browser will retrieve that metadata information from SAP Analytics Cloud and generate the query that's required and send that query to the underlying source system using a proprietary method uh, that's referred to information access layer or INA for short. And the data is then sent by that source system directly to the browser and then that data is then rendered by the browser within the story. So in this workflow, the data from the source system, say HANA, doesn't go to SAP Analytics Cloud. Now, there are some exceptions to this workflow, which we'll talk about in a bit, but for the most part, there's no data flow to SAP Analytics Cloud in this scenario. Now, what do I mean by metadata? Uh, so meta metadata is things like connection definition, uh, which could include uh, connection name, server name, as well as port information, and potentially the connection language settings. Keep in mind that we don't store the credential of the source system in SAP Analytics Cloud for live connections, which is also the reason why we you would want to set up SAML SSO so that the user doesn't get prompted to enter credentials when they go to view their stories in SAP Analytics Cloud. In addition to the connection information, we also store the source system model information. So for example, in the case of HANA, it would be a calculation view. Uh, in addition, we'll support thing, uh, we'll uh, store things like dimension names, measure names, etc. Uh, in the in the system. We don't store the member information in SAP Analytics Cloud uh, unless you enable search for inside option for live connections, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, metadata also includes a story definition, and you can read through what makes up the story definition on this slide. And if you take a look at the bottom of this table, uh, you can see that there are column headers, uh, and that's what we would be considered as metadata. And any of the column values or any of the values in the row are what we would be considering data, and that's the type of information that we actually don't store in SAP Analytics Cloud. As I mentioned before, we generally don't store data or move data through SAP in the Analytics Cloud, but for live connection, there are some exceptions. Uh, that, that you should be aware, aware of, where a subset of information is then processed by SAP Analytics Cloud. So for example, if you have smart grouping or predictive forecasting enabled for live models, the data required to create the forecast or grouping is temporarily sent from the browser to SAP Analytics Cloud. And SAC will run the predictive algorithm behind the scenes to send and generate the results and send that back to the browser. Similarly, if you have R visualization, the data that's required to render that R visualization is sent by the browser to the R server for processing, and the result is sent back to the browser for rendering uh, for the client. Blending of the data between acquired and live model also happens in SAC, 
and analytic model, analytical cloud models, live models that are configured for a search for insight option, also store the dimension member information in SAP Analytics Cloud. Now, all of these options that you see here are up to the administrator to decide whether they want to allow for these features to work for live connections. So there are options available that, that you can configure to disable these features if security is a concern. For live connections to the SPORTY systems, we can leverage what we call cross-origin resource sharing or CORS for short. And as I mentioned earlier, for live connection, it's the browser that's connecting to the database. And it's really CORS that allows us to work around the same origin policy of the browser. And what the same origin policy dictates is that the scripts running in a browser can only access data from a second web page if the requests come from the same origin. So now if you think about it, uh, that won't be the case for live connections. The scripts are running in SAP Analytics Cloud domain, which is .sapanalytics.cloud, and the browser will then try to access a resource on the underlying source system. And that could be HANA or BW or, or Business Objects Universes or, and whatnot. In the past, we used to be able to get around the, the same origin policy by routing all requests through a reverse proxy. So all traffic from the browser to SAP Analytics Cloud, to the IDP, or the underlying source system had to go through the reverse proxy. So this required customers to set up a reverse proxy in their network and configure complex forwarding rules. And not all reverse proxies supported this complex rules required. And generally, the configuration that, that customers had to go through was, was error prone. So as of late last year, we are recommending customers to use the, the course-based approach for live connections. Now, as you'll see in week three, uh, reverse proxy still has a, low, a role to play, but the role that it's going to play is, is much different uh, than the, the just to bypass the same origin policy of the browser. And uh, you'll get to see that in week three. How course works is that the request domain adds a certain request header to the get call for the resource from the second domain and the second domain can respond with certain response headers that will allow the browser to make that core across origin call and much of what we're going to do in the first week is show you how to configure the source system to issue these course headers and whether that system is HANA, BW, S4 HANA or the business objects platform. So let's take a look at what the live connection workflow looks like in a bit more detail. Uh, so if we look at my slide here, I've got SAP Analytics Cloud here running in the public domain here. And then I also have within the customer network several different SAP applications. And all of these applications uh, need to be configured for, for cores. So they need to be able to configure to issue course headers. And the typical workflow that happens with live connections is the browser here will make a, a browser is also running within the customer network. So, so, so a user is sitting in a, in a corporate office or they're actually VPN into their corporate network. They launch a browser window and they're trying to access a, a, a story in SAP Analytics Cloud that's using a live connection that could be coming from one of these data sources that you see on the screen here. Uh, so what will happen in that scenario is when the when a user opens up a browser, they open up an SAC story, will make an outgoing HTTPS call from the browser to SAP Analytics Cloud, and will retrieve the or the browser will at that point retrieve the metadata information for that story, and that metadata would be sent to the browser. Uh, browser at that point will generate a course request. And that course request is also done over HTTPS to whatever data source that that story is connecting to. Again, it could be HANA, BW, Business Objects Universes, and so on. Uh, and what happens in that scenario again is so the course request gets sent to the to the underlying source system. The source system at that point can send the data back directly to the browser. Again, in this scenario, there's no data movement that's happening uh, between the customer network. Uh, and SAP Analytics Cloud. So there's no uh, data that's being sent from that on-premise system to SAP Analytics Cloud. So there's no need in this case to open up any inbound firewall ports here, as long as the browser is able to make an outgoing HTTPS call to SAP Analytics Cloud, that's really all we need at this point.